Greetings, I am Patrick Rogers, political leader of the Belize Progressive Party, and you are watching Belizean Legends. Yeah, this is Belizean Legends, and we are speaking with Brother Patrick Rogers from the Belize Progressive Party. And we are talking about the Belize Guatemala dispute that has led up to the infamous International Court of Justice in taking the dispute to the International Court of Justice. And I am Bilal Morris. Um, Brother Patrick, that was a very in depth analysis of the historical uh, events that led to where we are today with this. Uh, Belize Guatemala dispute. That historical part is very important because our people have not been given this kind of education in the schools. We have not taught these things. We have no idea what led to that. It's not even the history books. We should be we should have been studying Belizean history instead of European history in the six forms and getting that kind of stuff. We have so that what you just gave there is for any student of history, is for you to document that and learn that. Because if you, you if you don't know your history, you're going to be forced to repeat it. We want to go directly to the crooks of the matter here. Presented the Belize Guatemalan territorial dispute. Uh, you have very clearly underlined the very important aspects of what is at stake here in terms of this document. Explain this document to us, okay. uh, particularly in the area of clause number seven and particularly the the article number two, the official text of that document. Okay. Go ahead, certainly. Um, I'll use two minutes just to express the Belize situation now, because Guatemala's claim to the territory on colonization norms caused succession that she inherited these rights from her mother. Belize uses self-determination as our key defense. We also use acquisitive prescription and historical consolidation. But acquisitive prescription being that uh, we have the, the uh, Guatemala has acquisited to the settlement then, which she has not. She has not. Um, the 1859 treaty, she has pretty much um, revoked that treaty. So our claim of acquisitive prescription will be a challenge because the Guatemalans have revoked the 1859 treaty claiming the non-fulfillment of the compensatory Article 7 clause. So that is in question, uh, acquisitive prescription. The next claim of historical consolidation, the Belize argument is that the exchange of notes in the 1930s where we were supposed to demarcate the border they're saying that that was the act that historical, showed historical consolidation of the territory. But again, as I mentioned, Guatemala did not proceed with tabling those exchange notes to the United Nations. They could not get it approved through their Congress because the British were snubbing them with a response to the compensatory clause for them to have proceeded with that. But the first claim of self-determination, that is the one and only one that can stand, right? That the people have a right to self-determination. And that claim comes from what is called decolonization norms that was implemented by the United Nations in the 1960s, where the United Nations basically mandated all European powers with colonies to give independence to these territories over the next 10, 20 years, but start this decolonization effort. So it's oil and water we're dealing with when we talk about this Belize Guatemala issue. I don't like to say territorial dispute. I like to say it's an issue. That's all it is. This Belize Guatemala issue has at its core water and oil position that is irreconcilable and is not suited for litigation because the claim of succession is a colonization norm. And our claim of self-determination is a decolonization norm from the 1960s and it's irreconcilable and cannot be a legal matter to be presented. So having said that, after the United Nations in 1960 started this decolonization effort, 
Belize was granted observer status in the United Nations. So we were able to send our foreign ministers and, and you know, our entourage to these United Nations Assembly where they were able to meet with other diplomats and you know, representatives from around the world in the UN. And some fantastic lobbying was done. Fantastic. To the point where in 1975, the question of Belize had gotten so much attention from the floor of the National Assembly that the matter was risen in the floors of the National Assembly. So, in 1975, Resolution 3432 was passed on the question of Belize. The very first resolution that addressed this matter of Belize as it proceeds to independence. So you understand how it starts, right? It says, the General Assembly having considered the question of Belize, having examined the relevant chapter of the report of the Special Committee on the situation with regard to the implementation of the Declaration of the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and People, having heard the statements of the representatives of Belize, reaffirming the principles established in the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and People set out in its Resolution 1514 of the 15th Assembly on the 14th of December 1960. In particular, the principle that all peoples have the right to self-determination by virtue of which right they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social and cultural development. Firmly convinced that the principles referred to above apply to the people of Belize with no less force than to the people of other colonial territories. Noting the firm desire of the government and people of Belize, which has been frequently expressed for many years past, to exercise their right to self-determination and to proceed to independence as soon as possible in peace and security and with their territory intact. Bearing in mind the repeated assurances by the government of the UK, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as the administering power, that it stands ready in accordance with Resolution 1514 of the 15th Assembly to take the formal steps necessary for Belize to exercise its right to self-determination and independence. Now this is the clause that I want you to listen to carefully from 1975. Regretting that certain differences of opinion not a claim on territory. Regretting that certain differences of opinion between the administering power and the government of Guatemala concerning the future of Belize have hitherto prevented the people of Belize from exercising their right to self-determination and independence in peace and security in accordance with their freely expressed wishes. Considering that these differences of opinion can and should now be speedily resolved by negotiations carried out in close consultation with the government of Belize. That's all we should have been. In consultation, we should have never taken up this thing. And in full acceptance of the principles referred to above. Now, here it is, Belize. The first article. One reaffirms the inalienable right of the people of Belize to self-determination and independence. Two, declares the inviolability and territorial integrity of Belize must be preserved. Three, calls upon all states to respect the right of the people of Belize to self-determination, independence and territorial integrity and to facilitate the attainment by them of their goal of a secure independence. Four, calls upon the government of the UK, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland as the administering power, acting in close consultation with the government of Belize and upon the government of Guatemala to pursue urgently their negotiations for the earliest possible resolution of their differences of opinion concerning the future of Belize in order to remove such obstacles as have hitherto prevented the people of Belize from exercising freely and without fear their inalienable right to self-determination and independence. Now this is the killer clause. Clause 5 says, declares that any proposal 
for the resolution of these differences of opinion that may emerge from the negotiations between the administering power and the government of Guatemala must be in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 1 and 2 above. So this is saying that after England and Guatemala settles their issue, our territorial integrity should still be intact because Article 2 says declares that the inviolability and territorial integrity of Belize must be preserved. And Article 5 is telling England and Guatemala, figure out one dollar figure and settle an issue so that Belize can proceed to a peaceful independence. You see. Now, this very resolution was passed every subsequent year. So in 1976, this very resolution was passed as Resolution 3150. In 1977, again it was passed as Resolution 3336. 1978, again it was passed. In 1979, again, the very resolution was passed almost verbatim. These documents are on the UN web website. You can download them to see for yourself. But in 1979, something happened. In 1979, although Cuba had adopted communism to avoid being invaded by the US, Cuba declared herself non-aligned. So they weren't buying this fact that they were, you know, East no Western Black or Western Black. So effectively, Cuba had the presidency of the what was referred to as the non-aligned nations within the United Nations, a group of countries that numbered 60, 70 in number at the time. These countries came together and put their feet down and voted as a bloc to say that Belize should get its independence and should not have to worry about losing its territory. So in 1980, when the resolution was passed, it was passed putting its foot down that England has one year to give Belize independence. So I feel like England gave, not the United Nations gave Belize its independence, not England. England had to give Belize its independence and this resolution 3520 of 1980 is what made us that our independence. But listen to this. It says, having concluded the question of Belize, considered the question of Belize, it repeats, you know, recalling the resolution 3432 of 1975 and list them for 76, 77, 78, 79. Having heard the statements of the representative of the UK and Guatemala, having also heard the statement of the representative of Belize, now this is the reference I made, recalling that the sixth conference of the head of state of government of non-aligned countries held in Havana from 3rd to 9th September 1979 reiterated its unconditional support for the Belizean people's inalienable right to self-determination, independence and territorial integrity and condemned all pressure or threats to prevent the full exercise of that rights. So this resolution goes on and it reaffirms again that the inalienable right of the people of Belize to self-determination, independence and territorial integrity and urge all states to render all practical assistance necessary for the secure and early exercise of that right. So here we're saying Belize that the UK and Guatemala settle on the differences but settling it should not involve violating Belize's territorial integrity. So here is where we need to be at Belize. We need for this thing to not be settled at the ICJ where it is not a matter suited for litigation. Very important. And, and to not take, for it, litigation. take it yes. to where it belongs, to the body that sanctioned our independence with territorial integrity. Security Council. And watch the United Nations Security Council have to abide by these resolutions because they are not in a position to go dictate to the floor of the assembly saying we the security council need you the general assembly to remove to revoke these resolutions from 75 76 77 78 79 and 80. that is a virtual impossibility and so that is why we are saying that our territorial integrity will remain intact if this matter reaches the united nations security council but for it to reach here we need to go through this process of an attempt to have it having it been settled at the ICJ. Since we've already been cornered into a corner, we need to go through this exercise of rejecting the ICJ option 
knowing, as I will point out a little later, that we will be losing territory if we go that route. It guarantees we will lose territory. Yeah, say that again, Brother Patrick uh, Rogers. The, the right of the ICJ guarantees Belize will lose territory. So we've been adamant about no to the ICJ because we knew once it stopped there, it would have progressed to this United Nations Security Council option, which is where we feel we want it as Belize and so we won't lose any territory there. The ICJ option, as we tackle a little bit later, guarantees we lose land. Yeah. And um, going to that right away, because that clause that you underscore there, Okay. Uh, is leading us to that very traitorous part yes. where we are going to lose territory if yes. we go to the ICJ yes. and Minister Bolson goes come back to haunt us in that he's Same. saying if you keep on giving Guatemala all the time something they're going to keep on coming back for something all the time he said that to the maritime areas and then he said that to Prime Minister Manuel Esquivel and he, he, he disputed with them and he rejected their thing you keep on go giving and giving time you give away sea territory now yep. they will come back for more and then because you have to settle exactly what you were saying there Belize have to begin to start settling at the united nations security council the real problem that you have just underlined there brother so go let's let's go directly okay. to that part first thing i need for police and to understand the international court of justice it's, although it's considered the legal arm of the United Nations, it's unlike any other type of court because the ICJ do not have no laws that govern how they rule. So it's not like the UN is the legislative arm that makes legislation that creates these laws that the ICJ used to rule on. That is not the case. The ICJ has no power whatsoever to hear this matter until the parties involved directly agrees to give the authority to the ICJ to rule on the matter. So until the ratification of the compromise and the people of Belize passing our referendum saying that we are willing to give this power that isn't there to the ICJ, they do not have the power. So as of right now, as we're speaking, the ICJ has no authority to rule on this And that's matter. very, very important, Belizean viewers, that you understand, and our viewers, that you understand that, that the ICJ has no power to rule, yes. to rule in this case, as long as there is not a referendum, as there is, a, as long as the, the Belize people, the Guatemalan people, rejects it in a referendum. Yes. And now, the, the, the most important thing that I need for Belizeans to understand is that although the ICJ is a functionary of the UN, you'd say the UN is the mother and the ICJ is the daughter, although that is the situation, whereas the UN has sanctioned our independence with territorial integrity, if we are, and I'm going to use the word but be like stupid enough to proceed to the ICJ, especially under the terms and conditions of the compromise referendum questions and articles in there as they are, we would be giving the ICJ the authority to rule against something that their mother declared. You see, so although the UN declared our territorial integrity, the ICJ can take that away if we're stupid enough to give them the power to rule on that. That is important for us to understand. So that is why we were saying when we Strip down the compromise at Article 2, and I, I had expanded on it here. Article 2 in the compromise, this is the first article that we would have liked to have amended had we gotten it to the Senate for ratification. Article 2 states the parties request the court to determine, in accordance with applicable rules of international law, as specified in Article 38 1 of the Statute of the Court any and all legal claims of Guatemala, and I'll get back to that term, any and all legal claims of Guatemala against Belize to land and insular territories and to any maritime areas pertaining to these territories, to declare the rights therein of both parties 
and to determine the boundaries between the respective territories and areas. So this Article 2, brothers and sisters, is what effectively takes and gives to the ICJ the authority to rule on this matter and it hamstrung them by removing their discretion to determine monetary compensation should Belize lose. There is no wording in here that would allow the ICJ judges to draw reference from what I gave earlier about the fact that Guatemala would have accepted money when this thing was an anger guatemalan dispute. It was a monetary dispute that could have been settled monetarily. Well, the ICJ judges won't have that in their discretion because this Article 2 is not leaving them any room for that. Just to determine the boundaries. So if they see Belize lose, they're going to say, well, you know what, Guatemala has rights, has legal claim. And you acknowledge it by giving me this yes. authority. 